And obviously you take responsibility for your part in it and you look at it, but in that situation, like, that person wasn't taking responsibility for their part in it and was just blaming. So I went off on a tangent there, but the point was blaming. You can't blame anyone for your reality. And there might be people to blame, right? You might have really had a very rough start in life. Your parents might have been not emotionally healthy. I say the vast majority of ours wasn't. That's why we're doing this work at this time. That's the whole point. We chose our parents, right? Maybe you had, uh, maybe there was abuse. Maybe there was trauma. Maybe there was bullying, whatever it was that you went through. A few of the things that I mentioned are things that I've gone through too. Maybe there was assault, whatever it was. Like that's in the past, that's done now. And you can stay there and you can dwell on it and you can blame people and be like, well, I can't have healthy relationships because my mother is this, this and this. It's just gonna limit you, right? So you have to look at that and be like, okay, so what can I learn from this? I know what love is because I know what love isn't. You might have been told by your family, you might have been told no one, no one will ever love you like your family loves you. And as you've grown older, you might have discovered that there was kind of manipulation there or you might call it abuse or emotional something or other like it wasn't healthy it wasn't a healthy environment and a lot of the trauma that you endured was in that environment where you've been told no one's ever going to love you like we'll love you and so you develop this weird kind of Stockholm syndrome where you think that love is pain love equals pain and you think that you know you start to develop this bond with people that have kind of abused you. Abuse is a relative term, by the way, so it doesn't mean it has to be really extreme. It can be subtle. Um, trauma is the same thing. It doesn't have to be a very dramatic kind of trauma. It can be something that has a really deep impact on you. And so you develop a, a kind of Stockholm syndrome there. Stockholm syndrome, I'm sure you all know what, what that means, but if you don't, it's basically from this um, bank heist that happened in Stockholm where people were held hostage and they developed this bond with their captors so much so that when their captors were charged afterwards, they were charged in a court of law, the um, victims, you know, I say victims because they didn't see themselves as that, they were such strong advocates for their captors that they actually raised money to help support the, the bank robbers in their legal campaign, right? And it was called Stockholm Syndrome. Like the, the people who were the victim in the situation were bonding with the people that caused the abuse. It's super common. And if that's happened in a family, there's been abuse in a family, or there's been any kind of unhealthy emotional situations, then you've developed a bond and you might keep like going back home because your family have given you this feeling, this thought, this, this really screwed up belief of like, this is the only place where you're safe. No one's gonna love you like we love you. And so what also happens if it's not kept in check, if you're not aware of this, is you can develop that bond with other people like if other people remind you of your mum or your dad or your brother like you date them you're friends with them you work with them right and you you attract people like that into your life because you think well that's the relationship that's the dynamic what I want you to do is entertain the possibility that perhaps they're right and perhaps no one will love you the way they love you because the way that they loved you was through a very emotionally unhealthy dynamic right through codependency through maybe acute narcissism, through addiction, right? Through violence, perhaps. Perhaps it wasn't physical violence, perhaps it was emotional and mental violence, right? And if that's how they loved you, then perhaps they're right, nobody else will love you in that way because now you know what love isn't, right? But it's up to you to make that distinction. It's up to you to do the inner work, to have the counseling, to have the coaching, to invest in what you need in order to move through that. Like, there's only so much you can do through videos, right? And I have lots and lots of options if you do want to work with me um, and really get deep into this. But it's about really challenging your beliefs and challenging what's possible for you and challenging what you were told as a kid. Now, even though I ran through that whole scenario of what might have happened to you as a child, this isn't about going, oh, so that happened there so far. It's my parents' fault for me being where I am. Again, you're responsible for you. So like cry about it, grieve it, work through it, process it, but don't stay there because it's not gonna help you to move forward, right? And you deserve so much better than that. You deserve so much more than that.